Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we have presentations about anything that may be of interest to librarians in the state of Nebraska. Um, we do we have Commission staff that do presentations, and we have guest speakers that come in. Um, today we have a mixture. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're speaking. <laughs> um, we do these every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time live. They are all recorded, so you can watch any of the recordings that you want to um, afterwards if you're not available to come at during our live sessions, or share the information with any of your colleagues, people you may know that might be interested in a topic that we have. Uh, today we have a session that was kind of um, created by... by Laura Johnson, our CE coordinator here. It was your idea. Well, <laughs> sort okay. of. Yes. yes. It was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we give um, continuing education grants, and it seemed like a really good opportunity to share the wealth um, to be able to do this. So I, mm -hmm. I rounded up she made it happen, so we will do this. <laughs> <laughs> So what we have today then is what we're called our fall conference roundup, which does not mean every fall conference that's out there. No, just a couple that um, some people from Lincoln City Libraries went to. Um, they received continuing education and training grants from the Library Commission. And to in order to attend um, a couple of different conferences that were both this fall. Correct, yes. <laughs> um, we have, let's see, I'm going to make sure I get the names right of the convention, the meetings. Um, Pat Sloan went to a Back in Circulation Again conference, and then Sheila Jacobs, on my left over here, uh, went to a Volunteer Coordinators Conference in South Dakota, actually, and yours was in Wisconsin. Yeah. So out-of-state conferences, too. This is not just for things like NLA. It's really get yourself out there somewhere. <laughs> Um, to get to a conference and so they both attended these and they're going to share their experiences what they saw what they did what was cool about it I guess um, so and we're going to start with there you go all right okay take it away <laughs> and I'm Pat Sloan and I'm the circulation librarian for Lincoln City Libraries so um, I found out um, mostly from the circulation manager at the Omaha Public Library about this conference. It's um, hosted by the School of Library and Information um, Studies at the Un University of Wisconsin in Madison. I said, oh, going to Madison. Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, and they do this every maybe two to four years. It kind of uh, varies. I saw on the um, website it said it was the sixth, so it's not necessarily an annual thing. It's it, just a whenever they do it's it. It's kind of whenever. <laughs> um, right. Apparently they started out every two years, but, you know, maybe not so much lately. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, But um, I was really grateful to get the grant to go because um, the... Uh, well, the registration fee was a little hefty. That was oh, probably, you know, that I knew that the registration and the, the hotel type things would be on the hefty side. And um, the Lincoln City Libraries, you know, encourages us to get grants to attend these things. So, mm -hmm. um, but then in talking to the circulation manager at the Omaha Public Libraries, um, she indicated, you know, she would be going and it looked like she could take mm -hmm. a couple of her uh, staff from several branches. And so I quickly said, oh, can I ride with you? <laughs> so I was able to keep expenses down by sharing the ride and then sharing a room. Mm -hmm. So that really helped a lot too. Um, actually riding with the, the staff from Omaha Public Library, was, was that in itself was a great experience. Mm -hmm. They were wonderful travel companions, if any of them ever listened to this. <laughs> um, so, uh, but we, you know, we were just sharing stories back and forth because we're all in circulation and working at the, basically, a, a front desk area, answering all kinds of questions, including a lot of reference questions mm -hmm. you, yeah. that you get at the oh, circulation yeah. desk. And in some branches, it's all one and the same. So um, you are just prepared for everything. But we were just definitely sharing stories of, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as well as as right now, both 
Omaha and Lincoln are on the uh, Circe Dynex Horizon system. Mm -hmm. So just how that works and just kind of odds and ends of little things, how we, you know, quirky things that may come up and how we handle them and, oh. you know, things like that. So we were, we were able to while away the hours um, uh, quite nicely uh, traveling together and fortunately, um, the driver knew the way, and uh, we didn't even need, need a navigator. She knew exactly where she was going. She had been before, plus her daughter had lived in Madison for a number of years, so she could drive it blindfolded. You know, it was an easy drive. It is an all-day drive, though. So, um, And then the, the, the University of, of Wisconsin is sort of right downtown, very somewhat yeah. similar to Nebraska. And we were staying in a, there's a kind of a conference hotel. So, and then a different building for the conference meetings. The hotel was on the older side. The, the conference center where the meetings and sessions are held was nice and new with all the high tech equipment. So that was nice, but you know, easy walking distance. We had nice weather and um, were able to, to get in and the, um, the, the area right around there is all just um, small theaters, boutiques, and a ton of restaurants with every ethnic variety you can imagine. So um, it's just kind of a nice break sometimes during mm -hmm. a conference is to, to get out and walk and look at something else. Oh, sure. Plus, I could take advantage of just pairing up with different people for different meals just to talk to people from different areas mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, there were 81 circulation librarians from around the United States. Most of them, I noticed, were kind of Midwest, pretty much within a day's drive. <laughs> <laughs> but there were, yeah. there was, you know, someone from California, then we had Massachusetts, uh, South Carolina, Texas, I mean, it just a few from others. A uh, number of people had attended before, really enjoyed the conference and were coming back, but there were plenty that were also new to this. And so um, I was, you know, kind of hovering in between since I was with people that had been before, but this was a new experience <laughs> for me. So um, anyway, it was, it was fun. We had um, 49 of the people attending were with public libraries and 32 were with academic libraries. It was open to, uh -huh. uh, you know, any system. And it's it, a nice, it, nice mixture. Yeah, it included yeah, yeah. a small, small town, you know, public libraries, some community colleges, probably not, not very many of the, like, large universities, mm -hmm. but more of a, there were some private colleges, mm -hmm. all kinds mm -hmm. of, of things. And, um, just a very nice assortment of people, and um, we, you know, when we when we gathered together, um, it it was it was interesting. One thing I was really had fun kind of watching is, um, well, I would say the average age was was maybe forties and up of the, those attending. Well, there were some younger, and so as people were listening to presentations, over half. The people were actually taking notes on pen and paper, you know, yeah. with notebooks. And all. But we did have plenty of people with their laptops, mm -hmm. just you know, clicking away. And and I was really wishing it was one of them, but that just wasn't going to happen. So um, it was just kind of fun to see, you know, the the difference in technology. Mm -hmm. And then the the room was equipped with all the the high tech, you know, mm -hmm. things for PowerPoint presentations and everything. And it was also fun when w one of the presentations, the person is like, how do you run this stuff? <laughs> it, was like, it was obviously just a little new to her, but, you know, also not being sure where things were in that particular yeah. room. So, oh, sure. When it's not your own place and your own laptop right. or your own computer, yeah. So, um, but we did have, um, the, the first presentation was called Difficult Conversations, and it was um, by Jeffrey Russell, who is a, a local Madison person. He has Russell Consulting Firm, and he's worked a lot with the public libraries, the, the universities there and anywhere else. So, um, but we had some kind of general group time and then some small group breakout time. But we were talking about, and, and many of us, and we all, especially at Circulation and Information Desks, um, deal with some difficult customers. You have people not happy about 
all kinds of things, not just the fact that they have some fines, but all of a wide variety. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of sharing um, experiences. And then uh, Mr. Russell was just trying to give us guided information on how to have those conversations that would not end in a shouting match, that you would somehow, you know, trying to come to an agreement so that you could both feel that something was accomplished. Um, and, you know, everything keeps changing. I know we get customers, well, it didn't used to be this way, and well, yeah, I know, it didn't used to be either. And this, this change this year, something else is going to change next year, and some people mm -hmm. don't like the change as well. Yeah. And this happens, you know, with the colleges and universities as well as public libraries. So it's, it can be challenging to handle um, the difficult customers, and I know I get my fair share of them because I'm kind of, if it involves fines or their record, it usually end up, ends up with a phone call from me. So. It's just the way I've mm -hmm. learned to deal with it. We had, did have another session called Freak Out, Geek Out, or Seek Out, which dealt <laughs> with transformation and change in the libraries. And the present, the man presenting, giving the presentation was David Lee King from the Topeka Shawnee oh, County. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and he is just, you know, fun beyond all belief because he's so animated and so alive. And it's just, it's it's like it's infectious. He's, he, he's spoken here in, in Lincoln yeah. several times. Mm -hmm. He's just, yeah. um, I was delighted when I saw him on the program. And um, so just kind of, you know, it, and going through the fact that, that change is, is occurring more rapidly now, but used to take mm -hmm. 10 years to get into sort of the general mode or 20 years is now <laughs> six months or, yeah. and, and things are changing rapidly. We, you know, libraries kind of got into the the whole computer thing initially. Maybe like OCLC was your first computer in any oh, library. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know that was kind of my first experience. And then, you know, it kind of then maybe you you got another couple of computers, and then you maybe ooh, graduated to word processing <laughs> and and the the old dialog um, dial ups uh, oh, system. That, yeah. and, started out at the mind-boggling speed of 300 baud a minute, which you can actually <laughs> read as it goes across the screen. Of course, yes. now everything is just flash, 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 mm -hmm. so fast. It's amazing. But now it's not just act, you know, computer access or internet access that uh, libraries have to offer the public. It's, it's the, the Facebook, the Twitters, mm -hmm. the, you know, all, all of that, plus um, Customers are not only wanting to maybe be notified by an email or a phone call. They want to be, uh, you know, send a text message, send a, yeah. you know, a voicemail. Send. They they are becoming very demanding <laughs> in their electronic needs, and it it was interesting to hear some of the libraries are trying to cope with it. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of in initial stages in many cases. So yeah, because it's very new and. In most cases, most of us don't get the newest, latest equipment right away. We're right. kind of living just a little bit behind. Some of your patrons have the new stuff before you do. And quite right. often, that yeah. is the case. I, I still remember the first day someone came up with their smartphone, and you know, it's like, okay, here, here's your, here's your page on my. Where do I go from here? And I'm staring at a little teeny tiny screen. Now, going, <laughs> oh my goodness, um, that was, you know, I was able to guide him through to what he wanted, but it was interesting that he, mm -hmm. he came into the library to figure out how to get to what he needed to. Mm -hmm. Now, on a smartphone, it's a little more challenging yes. because it's so darn tiny, but we figured it out for him. Mm -hmm. But you've gotten the QR code. Yes. Like we do. And, you know, people still ask us, though, what they are. And well, then... That's very yeah. new, yeah. And it's still very new. And, and as well as... Some come in and go, wow, you've got a QR code or something. <laughs> so it's like, okay, yeah, we're not totally in the dark ages. We're trying to, <laughs> to keep up with things. So it's, it's been fun. Um, there were also during this conference, sometimes the public librarians met separately and the, the academic mm -hmm. librarians met. And so they were dealing with some different things. I really wish I'd been able to have a, you know, clone or somebody to go to both meetings oh, they yeah. actually sounded you definitely equally learn interesting. from each other yeah. and you do yeah. so 
um, one of our sessions with public libraries was kind of, was called Special Services Cards for Outreach. And this was um, the Williamsburg, uh, Virginia Regional Library System. And um, she was promoting that, you know, their, their system, is, it's kind of like a county-wide or maybe it was multi-county, I can't remember, but they, they were, they had established kind of special library cards and um, they would reaching out to teachers, activity directors at daycare centers and um, like uh, retirement centers, senior day centers, things like that where they, and, and out, she was the outreach librarian and they had decided to just try in, one way to actually increase circulation is find these special groups in your communities. See what you can do for them. You have to quite often do, you know, it can't be the same as an individual customer. You may need longer checkout periods. You may need different kinds of cards, different fines, different all kinds of things. Um, at that particular system, they even did some pick up and delivery um, of bags of books that would go to daycares or um, nice. retirement centers. And um, they had um, kind of a, a special like cards for the teachers or the activity directors so that I think they, they weren't really accumulating the fines like individual mm -hmm. people and, and all. Mm -hmm. And even had them in different colors. And so it's like, no, I know Lincoln City Libraries did some similar, but um, this is something, you know, a library in any city could do is oh, yeah. see, you know, if, I'm sure there's daycares in even in any town, um, perhaps a, a special uh, card or service to cater to daycares or the retirement centers are certainly growing by leaps and bounds and, you know, making contact with retirement centers and can we bring you a box or a bag of books every week or something like that or take requests and deliver them. Yeah. Um, there's a, a nice variety of things that can be done and that can also help increase your circulation. So. Well, and it's a wonderful way to serve a, a, and a segment of the community that may have difficulty getting into your building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know um, Lincoln City Libraries, we are visited by daycares Mm -hmm. quite often, mm -hmm. but we also know they check out a lot of stuff to, yeah. you know, take back and then that's mm -hmm. theirs for the week or three weeks yeah. or whatever their schedule is. So very, very nice service. So we also um, had um, Camilla O'Leary talk about, she titled hers was, Every Voice Makes a Difference, Frontline Library Advocacy for Where You Sit. And this actually applies to, you know, public, academic, any kind of library, even special. But um, really getting to know your customers, particularly key customers, like people that work with your budget mm -hmm. or um, influential, but just anybody, getting to know their, either their reading interests, their hobbies, or, you know, a, May, maybe a business interest, what, what's their latest need, what is their need, and then being aware of that and um, sort of, you know, knowing their name, knowing how to contact them and say, oh, here's, here's an article in the such and such magazine about this topic. I thought you would be interested in it. Maybe, maybe like email, would you like me to email you a copy? Would you like... Um, uh, maybe notifying someone about a certain book on a topic they're interested in. Would you like me to hold that for you? Um, you know, very personal service. But boy, that really, you know, sticks home in their mind. Customers really note that and they yeah. will seek you out again oh, yeah. or they become more favorable about the library and word of mouth. They spread you get really good service mm -hmm. at the library. I they, can ask for this, and this is what they do for me. And that can mm -hmm. they can spread that information to their friends, colleagues, all kinds of people, and that can help influence public opinion and support, mm -hmm. especially budget oh, support. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You're going for a bond issue. Where you're going yes. To mm -hmm. Or even um, if you're having, say, a, a fundraising campaign, mm -hmm. it'd be wonderful. 
So yeah, that's um, a, I think that's a great idea. I've heard other people talk about that too, about getting them the articles, being mm -hmm. proactive before yeah. they even ask. Yes. You know, and I mean this in a good way, you know, stalk them. Find out what the mayor is interested in, what are his interests or right. something. And say, hey, by the way, here's just something I thought you might like. Let me know if you want to know more. And just, you know, yeah. get and, in there. <laughs> and, and even with just, you know, people, you know, you, you after a while you kind of get to know the people that mm -hmm. come in frequently, yeah. perhaps what they like. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, maybe they've read everything by a certain author now. Yeah. And it's like, well, what else? Now what? <laughs> now what? And, you know, you'll think, well, what have you read le recently or what do you like? And then, you know, we can go to, like, read-alike sites and try to find, well, here's authors that write similar to uh, that. Or if, if you, um, maybe they like cozy mysteries. Maybe they like um, uh, things about World War II or just, just getting to know. And then also keeping in mind if something new comes out, letting them know if you know even if it's only when they come in and say hey there is a new book out on this topic or by this author um we usually have one in our new book display or something or you know taking them and walk into the catalog find the number make sure it's still in and getting it into their hand that day and that impresses people they think very favorably oh, yeah. when it's personal yeah. service yeah. Even, even a good way to treat your board members and oh yes, board members, yeah. Um, so it's just been, you know, I I know a lot of our staff try to do that too. We you get to know certain people, and they get to know you and seek you out then too. Mm -hmm. So um, we also had a session about um, addressing particular concerns uh, serving uh, individuals with mental illnesses. And again, particularly public libraries may get customers um, or sometimes just people that come in. <laughs> they, they may or may not actually use the library, but um, with, you know, and sometimes you really don't know exactly what the situation is, but it can be obvious there's, there's some problem, either sometimes just their ability to communicate, sometimes um, they they like to talk a lot, or sometimes they don't want to talk at all. They don't want any help. Um, they may meander around quite a bit, but just trying to uh, approach them to see what it is they're needing. You know, what is their need? Finding out. You know, are they looking for certain authors for certain kinds of information, or are they the kind of person that wants to be left alone? And you know, you, you may have all, all kinds of people and maybe just trying to understand a little bit more what it is they're struggling with. I mean, they're, if, you know, any number of mental illnesses, just getting out in public is a struggle for oh, some yeah. people. So, um, and, and even some physical illnesses. We, we certainly, Lincoln City has a, a, a number of customers that either come in or through our home service have a variety of physical and or mental issues to deal with. So um, I, I must say I, I enjoyed um, not only the sessions, but in between sessions and meals going out with people from, you know, just finding a group of people and going out for the lunch or the, the, the dinner and things. And then um, just having all kinds of fun talking about um, a variety of things and, and sharing information. One one thing I was sharing with um, some people that were, I think more of them were actually academic librarians with um, a dinner. And uh, we, we got to talking about scheduling a little bit, but I did mention that um, we use Google Docs for our um, schedules. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way so that staff can access a schedule from home. Yeah. And we put up, a, we have weekly schedules and for some of, the, some of our locations we even have a daily schedule that are available for staff to view, which can be really, really great, especially for maybe part-time staff that don't have a real regular schedule. Right. And it's like, 
otherwise they were calling it, am I working today? Or <laughs> am I working tonight? Or what's my, when am I supposed to be there tomorrow? And it's just been incredibly helpful, as well as it makes an, a really good, easy record. Oh, yeah. Um, that we just have, then, mm -hmm. um, as to who was doing what, who was here. We have, you know, if you're attending a meeting, everything is on the schedule. So nice. it can, it can yeah. kind of help your own recall. What was I doing last week or last <laughs> month? And, um, and even getting those last minute changes on a schedule. Too yes. Really helpful. Because then it blink, mm -hmm. it's on every computer. So we just, we just pull it up on all our computers That's and, great. and yeah. make it easily available. And it was like, you know, doing it on paper before mm -hmm. and then having to run around and erase and change <laughs> things. And like, this is so much better. <laughs> you know, as long as there's internet access, it's great. And now people, yeah. people with the smartphones are because, hey, I can just have my schedule right here in yeah. front of me on my smartphone. It's wonderful. Um, you know, Pat, you had mentioned too, visiting with people during the, the breaks, mm -hmm. and that's one of the great things too about conferences is just that networking and mm -hmm. you know, like people and just what you are doing. And yeah. I had mentioned just the the sharing of information, and um, that's just such a, a key to not only the sessions, but visiting and making those connections with other people in the yeah. same position. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, said, we do a lot now online like this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is great, but they, you still have to, I mean, a lot of people, this is the only thing they can do. They can't travel anywhere. They can't get away, and that's fine, but if you can use this grant to get yourself somewhere in person in front of yes. people, it can make a huge difference, yeah. yeah. So, and, and I just particularly enjoy talking with people from other libraries. So it just, mm -hmm. um, and then afterwards, they set up a, you know, a, we have a blog now, so we oh, yeah. all still keep communicating. Oh, cool. And and they gave us, of course, a, a list of all the attendees with, you know, the phone numbers and the email addresses yeah. and stuff. So we can still keep in contact because maybe something came out, you know, I'll get back to you on that. Yep. Or, you, you know, you can email somebody and say, well, you talked about this. What, you know, what more can you tell mm -hmm. me about? It was it was a wonderful experience. Well, so. good. We're glad. Sounds cool. Good to hear. Yeah. Okay. Ready for okay. Sheila. All, All right. right. Next, we will switch over from circulation to volunteers. Volunteers. Okay. There we go. And first, I want to thank the, the Nebraska Library Commission for the grant to attend the the third annual Volunteer Coordinators Conference. I I just really appreciate. The opportunity and thank you for for the grant and <laughs> uh, my name is Sheila Jacobs I'm the outreach services supervisor with Lincoln City Libraries and part of my duties include uh, overseeing the volunteer program at Lincoln City Libraries and just to, to say a few words at first why uh, I was so appreciative of, of having the opportunity to to get this grant to attend the conference our library system in calendar year 2009 had over a thousand volunteers and they wow. contributed over 20,000 hours so that's just a huge huge piece that's awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah as far as our program goes and um, with our volunteer program our volunteers um, can be as young as sixth grade on up and uh, the sixth graders, the middle schoolers do help with the summer reading program mm -hmm. and we rely a lot on, on their assistance. And then we have teens who volunteer with developing and implementing programs for mm -hmm. other teens. Uh, we have adults who do shelving, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and check in and just an assortment of other tasks. And uh, really the, the purpose of volunteers uh, with Lincoln City Libraries, as I'm sure would be uh, the same as a lot of other agencies, but they're really taking care of a lot of behind-the-scenes tasks that will free up time then for our staff to do what Pat was suggesting before, too, that personalized service with the customer. So uh, we love our volunteers. They, they are terrific, and um, we say it just about daily. We don't know where we'd be without our, our volunteers. <laughs> Um, as far as the, the conference in South Dakota, it was in beautiful downtown Sioux Falls, and Sioux Falls really is a cool, cool town. It reminds me mm -hmm. of Lincoln probably 30 years ago without the waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very, very cool town, um, and so it, it took about four hours to, to drive up there. Mm -hmm. I went solo uh, this year, and 
a lovely drive, um, pleasant, pleasant um, travel time. Um, the, the folks who attended the conference were really primarily from South Dakota, but we did have folks from surrounding states in North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And so it's in that lower, the corner of the state, so other states can, you know, people from other states can get yep. there easily. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and well, and actually, folks, um, and it is in the southeastern part of the state, so mm -hmm. there were folks from the western part of South Dakota, mm -hmm. and of course, they, they drove a lot mm -hmm. farther than, than I did, so um, I think it took about three and a half hours or so to, to get up there. So, um so there was a, a good group, a good group of, of folks represented. I'm thinking that probably there were, oh, maybe around 75 uh, mm -hmm. individuals who attended, wow. a lot from nonprofit uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. But then there were also for-profits as well. The, the hospitals were in attendance, mm -hmm. the community blood bank, folks from the zoo. Uh, folks who work with with aging services throughout the state, so a good mix, but primarily nonprofit. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to meet anyone from a library up there, but mm -hmm. you know, and that that was okay too, because it's just interesting again to to hear those like experiences when oh, it yeah. comes to to volunteers. Uh, what I plan on doing is taking a couple minutes and sharing uh, information from our keynote address as well as a session that spoke to intergenerational volunteering. And um, the first item I, I want to, to share information from is the presentation that was called Selling Up, Down, and Sideways. And the keynote uh, speaker was Margaret Sumption. And she is with a firm, or her firm, in Sioux Falls. And she provides uh, services in terms of grant writing, leadership mm -hmm. training, uh, strategic planning. So it was really interesting to, to hear her, her presentation. I'm going to read the description of her presentation um, that was listed in the, the booklet. It said that Margaret will present strategies for volunteer managers to get a seat at the table as leaders assign resources for volunteer programs, build department buy-in to include volunteers and work teams, expand the capacity of volunteers through training and mentoring, and to successfully integrate them into the work teams they are assigned. Mm -hmm. So that was her description, and she began her presentation by saying that generally her presentation is about uh, a day long, and uh -huh. um, at the for her keynote address, she compressed that information into about a two and a half, three hour session, I'm now going to wow. compress it down to <laughs> 10 minutes. So okay, we're going to, we'll, we'll miss a, a few things. Real highlights. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get in them highlight reel. <laughs> um, so how it worked was she had 10 strategies that, um, that she addressed. And the strategies really combined self-improvement, leadership techniques with tips on enhancing and strengthening, strengthening the visibility of a volunteer program. And at the end of each point, she offered a grab-and-go strategy um, that helped people put those ideas into motion. So I'm going to highlight six of those strategies, and we'll go through these pretty quickly. But um, the first two really are focusing on, on the person. Now, again, as we're, we're thinking about this keynote session, she really is looking at ways that volunteer managers can sell their programs. So even though we're talking about volunteers here, this certainly could apply in other areas oh, of, yeah. of a person's um, job. But the first two focused on, on ourselves, on the individual. Uh, her first is finding your core strength. Um, how do you see yourself um, if you don't believe in what you're doing, if you don't believe in the volunteer program? Um, first of all, you need to find another another job probably. <laughs> if you don't believe in, in the program, it's really difficult to sell it. And that's the, the main focus that she was presenting is, is selling the volunteer program. And you need to look for that passion. Do you have that passion? Or are you needing that passion? So her first grab-and-go strategy that she offered was, to, was for individuals to develop their own strategic plan develop a, a mission statement, goals and objectives for mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. to, to find their core strength. Second then was be good, be good at what you do. And she was focusing there a lot on the time issue and leveraging your value. 
um, the time issue as far as how, how productively do you use your time at work. Uh, we do a lot of, uh, most of us do a lot of the, the emails, a lot of the memo writing. Um, do, we, do we obsess with that? Do we uh, spend a lot of time in making sure that, that every sentence is correct, the spelling is correct, or do we just send it out and, and know that it's going to be good enough? And she's suggesting we just do that, you know, just say it could because we, she was suggesting we spend about 80% of our time doing those routine things, and it doesn't have to be perfect was what she was suggesting. Mm -hmm. However, the other 20% like developing brochures or uh, planning presentations for a board or something really do need to be um, looked at more, more in detail and, and presented more thoroughly. So she was suggesting to look at how we get our work done and um, she also had indicated, and I thought this was interesting, and I don't, don't quite know how this would work exactly, but she was saying to, to leverage your value. And what she used for an example there was when you get to, to work, don't immediately check your email um, because that then consumes your time and you're taking care of other people's needs. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You know, and, but, but she was suggesting that, that you take the initial time um, at the first part of your day to, to take care of what you need to get done and then go into the emails and, and taking care of those. So I don't know. Um, Depends on how you organize your work. I mean, if what you need to get done is in your email, well, then that's exactly. got to go, go in there. Yeah. But you can pick and choose what emails you pay attention to. That's a good you know, point. That's your crisis, not mine. i got to do this first. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good way of looking at it. Um, her grab-and-go strategy for, for looking into that a little bit more was to write a development plan for yourself. And she had suggested to list three things that you want to improve on uh, on any given year or, or a 12-month time frame. And two of the improvements would concern work and one would be fun, something <laughs> for fun. And so she said, identify books, training, resources to meet this plan, and divide the plan into the months and develop that strategy for um, improvements that you would like to, to make for yourself. Um, then she moved on from looking internally into yourself to um, selling the volunteer program and selling the, the program internally. And she had suggested uh, to bring volunteers to meetings with you, um, use them as selling agents internally, um, have, have them help sell, sell to others in the house. Um, she said, look for somebody who definitely is engaged and involved, enthusiastic to help sell uh, the volunteer program. And she said, too, that be sure that volunteers are in your department. If you're the volunteer coordinator, um, or working with volunteers, be sure that they're in your department as well. Another item was she suggested enlisting champions with credibility, and what she meant with the, what she meant by that was um, use a happy manager uh, to sell volunteers, um, a volunteer or a, a manager who is happy with with volunteers. I think maybe is the, mm -hmm. the way to describe it. Um, also, employees who have a successful relationship with volunteers. Uh, use them to, to sell the volunteer program. Her grab-and-go strategy was develop a fan file. And by that she was saying, um, ask, the, ask the, the supervisors, ask the staff uh, to tell, tell you something good about volunteers who work in their setting. And then use that information, um, develop a, a fan file, a quote file. Use that information then in an annual report. Uh, put it in a memo, use it in, in an agenda for a meeting. So um, just constantly refer back to a quote or two uh, that you have received from, from a supervisor or staff member about volunteers, a positive quote, and then uh, continue to use that. One, uh, one of her strategies, uh, or one of her items, was prep your fluffiest pom-pom. <laughs> and really what she was getting at there, I think, was more uh, in line with the elevator speeches that we're familiar with. Oh, I think yeah. you have your 15-second mm -hmm. speech. Well, she had suggested we do uh, develop a 60-second commercial outlining the program and features, talking mm -hmm. about statistics, the impact of, of the, the program and volunteers. 
and then you would have that available to develop in in whatever setting would be appropriate. So uh, elevator speech, uh, 60 second commercial, but just be prepared. Um, practice that, that uh, information to share with others when the, the time arises. And she also suggested to teach that commercial to the volunteer corps. And then the volunteers can yeah. also. They can sell it share. for you. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, another item, she was looking into measuring and reporting volunteer programs. Um, again, looking at identifying two or three key measures of a program impact, uh, creating a visual chart, something with pop, uh, something, um, a visual that you would use in reports, use agency-wide. Um, she had suggested picking a visual that works and use it a lot. So again, that repetition. You have a visual that you're using to chart the progress of the volunteer program. And you're putting that into just about everything that you can mm -hmm. that's gonna, that will apply to your program. And get the word out, again, selling it both internally and perhaps externally when you're looking at writing grants. You can plug, plug those pieces into the grant as well. Um, here I think was probably my favorite. She was talking about be innovative. And I, we probably all are, have been working with, with change and trying to come up with new ways of doing things. And I really, really like this. She had suggested you want to be the very best at failure. And I love that. I think that's mm -hmm. terrific. Because um, what she was really getting at was collecting innovative ideas from both staff and volunteers in terms of, of using volunteers. Um, if somebody comes up with a great idea, give it a try. Use one department mm -hmm. to test it out. Um, give it a try, and then she said again, be the very best at failure. So I, mm -hmm. I think that's great. It's kind of like do it, try it, and if it works, wonderful, and if it doesn't, well, you tried it. Yeah, failure is not a bad thing. No, anymore. it is. There's lots of things that conferences are doing now, whole tracks or sessions on failure, like a I whole thing of how we did it wrong, <laughs> yeah. how we screwed up, but we tried, and here's what we did, and here's what we might try and do better next time. Or can anybody else here, here tell me how to do it better next time? Because we couldn't figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You learn so much more from failure than you do from success. Uh -huh. No yes. kidding. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So really, th those were the highlights um, from from her presentation. I think if we can go to the next slide, mm -hmm. there are just there are several um, items, some titles that you may want to to take a look at. Um, Mojo is a fairly well. It came out, I, I'm thinking this year, and a uh, fairly good book, it looks like. I haven't had a chance to read it, but I just read blurbs about it on leadership. And there again, we have some other uh, titles regarding leadership um, and the workplace. And then at the bottom is the website for Assumption and Wyland. Uh, it is an, an agency, as I had mentioned, in Sioux Falls. And, and the group uh, provides training on grant writing, strategic planning, uh, leadership training and skills. So um, it was a, a very interesting presentation. Mm -hmm. And um, like she had indicated uh, initially, she did pack a lot in a short mm -hmm. amount of time. So those were the highlights with that um, presentation. And then one other presentation I just wanted to touch on was there was a, a session regarding generational diversity. And it was tips for engaging volunteers of all ages. And to the next slide for you. Sure, yeah, you can go ahead. And here are some, some websites that you may want to uh, take a look at. And the individual who presented uh, this session is Sarah Carruthers. And boy, she is just really sharp. She's a sharp young professional uh, in Sioux Falls. And she works with the 2-on-1 Helpline. Mm -hmm. And she, um, she did a, a great job with this presentation. She had a panel of four individuals, and the individuals were the, the four different age groups. Uh -huh. And um, I'll touch on just a couple of things here. It was, it was really interesting, fun, a fun presentation. Um, she talked about the silent generation, and that generally covers the age of 65 to 85. Mm -hmm. And again, generalities. Uh, we're looking at, or she was looking at values and characteristics of the various age groups. Uh, looking at, at tips for recruiting, placing, engaging, supervising, and recognizing these different age groups and seeing the, the tendencies for, for a variety of, of likes and, and choices. Uh, but with the silent generation, she had indicated that 
they're dedicated to doing the right thing. Well, I think that probably applies to, mm -hmm. to a lot of folks. Um, boomers, um, I really enjoyed the, well, I enjoyed all the panel members, but I, I enjoyed the, the boomer individual, um, and that generally is the age from 48 to 64. Uh, the person, um, I think maybe when we think of the boomers too, we think of the, the hippie era, and, mm -hmm. and she uh, felt strongly she needed to, to remind people that she really had not lived that particular <laughs> path, <laughs> down that path. Um, but at, at any rate, that era, but not everybody did that. See, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as far as boomers go, some generalities, some tendencies um, are that uh, boomers have a desire to change the world and that they, more than other groups, may have a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. um, it also is the highest volunteer rate of any group. So mm -hmm. um, that's, that's interesting to keep in mind as well. As far as the statistics that Sarah Carruthers was presenting, and again, uh, you'll find those statistics at, at some of the websites that are listed on the screen. The Gen X group um, covers the ages 30 to 47, and um, they generally are more independent thinkers. Um, they're more results-based and have a tendency to volunteer for a shorter term mm -hmm. uh, than others. And then the Gen Y, Gen Ad group, the age is 10, and that just sounds odd to say, mm -hmm. somebody is <laughs> the ages 10 to 29. Um, they also are exhibiting high rates of volunteerism, mm -hmm. and they really have a tendency, they um, enjoy teamwork. And um, they also uh, enjoy challenges, and they also appreciate having mentors as mm -hmm. well. So um, those were some of the, the highlights. It was just fun to, to listen to them and um, hear, hear their experiences. And again, I want to thank, thank the Library Commission for providing mm -hmm. the opportunity and the grant to attend the conference. It was a, an exceptional conference. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Sheila. Okay. And do you want? Now we're going to go over to Laura, who's going to tell us a little bit about how these guys got to go with them. <laughs> Hi, this is Laura Johnson. Um, first off, I have to thank Pat and Sheila for going to these conferences and bringing this material back to us. Um, this is one of the things that we hope the CE grant can do is to spread the wealth. Um, it's the, the individual who goes to the conference, we hope, gets a lot out of it in terms of um, interacting with people from other places, uh, seeing how other folks are doing it. Um, come on, let's face it, how many circulation librarians <laughs> are there in Nebraska? <laughs> I mean, we deal with circulation, but how many people are actually circulation librarians? So to be able to go um, find a peer group is pretty cool. Um, yes, there are volunteer coordinators, but how many people are volunteer? You know, so we think that's wonderful that we can um, get out and hear uh, what other people are doing. Um, yes, you can interact with people electronically. And that's wonderful because it's an opportunity that we didn't used to have. It used to be very difficult to find out what other people in other parts of the country were doing. Um, and now we can electronically. So we can, in, in some ways, continue the relationships that we may start at some of these conferences. But it's also true that being able to go in person is a wonderful thing. And so we're, we're really pleased to be able to underwrite that kind of opportunity because we feel it's not only benefiting the individual, um, but of course we do it because we think it benefits the library users. And that's really the important thing. The bottom line for us eventually is that we want to help you to improve your library service. And we think this is one way to do that. Um, we all get so involved in our day-to-day -day, um, tasks and uh, our community, and that's really good.
but it's also good to get outside of that every so often. Um, so we have the continuing education and training grants. They are meant to help people go beyond the usual. Um, therefore, they are not appropriate. Well, we, we don't, we will not fund, say, um, attendance at the Nebraska Library Association annual conference. It's not that we don't think that conference is worthwhile, because we do, but it's something we feel is within reach of many librarians, most librarians. And therefore, we want to put these things that maybe aren't really within reach, we want to help people with those things. So uh, these kinds of reach, these two were kind of regional conferences, but regional and national conferences are um, one of the things. The other thing that the CE and training grants will pay for is uh, training in your library or among a group of librarians in your area that you would not ordinarily be able to do. So um, one of the things to get a grant, uh, you may want to go to our web page. And um, this is the main page. This explains all of our grants. Um, libdev slash grant.html. Um, the easiest thing really is just to go to our website and um, search. Do the, do the little, it's the little glasses, isn't it? The, our, main, our main web page, you, you just click on search and, and ask it about the grants and it'll, it'll bring you right to this page. Um, we do want you to realize the CE grant is um, a hot topic right now because it is due, applications are due December 17th. So you still have time. That's two weeks. <laughs> and that's plenty of time. But um, you probably need to get on it. Uh, we were talking here today. We've tried different schedules for this. And if this isn't working for people, we can change it again. But the fact of the matter is there are conferences all year long. And so it's really hard for us to schedule it in such a way that we can help people get to the conferences they need to get to. We've put it this way uh, so that people can um, think about midwinter and about ALA or PLA. Um, but yes, there's internet librarian, there's computers and libraries, there's uh, MPLA, there, uh, you know, there are really a lot of conferences out there. Um, what the grant you just need to do is be based on the schedule, just think it's due December, what's coming up in that yes. whole year after that that I would want to go to? Yes, so it look is. Look ahead, yeah. know, starting with Lodge well, Grant Board in January, from January through December of 2011, what's available? Yes. So, yeah, the name of the game is Plan Ahead. Yes. <laughs> um, the grants will be awarded on January 21st. What happens is we get the applications, um, we have a committee of people who read them. Uh, several people from here in the commission and then a couple people from outside the commission. We read them. We, um, we have a discussion about them. It's always kind of painful because um, we want everyone to have the money, basically. Um, this is one of the things we'd really like to emphasize is if you've never written a grant, and Pat was telling me this is the first time she's done this, um, this may seem a little scary. It may seem, oh, they want to know so much. And they, but honestly, this is a fairly easy grant application as these things go. Um, it's to a place that wants to give you the money. We want you to have the money. We want you to be able to do this stuff. So we're rooting for you. Um, if you have trouble with your application, let us know. We'll try to help you with it. And think about it. Grant writing is not something that's going to go away. When we did our CE survey and asked people what kind of CE they were interested in, grant writing was like the top thing that they wanted to know more about. Well, there is no better way to learn something than by doing it. And this is a great way to get your feet wet because you are never going to have a more sympathetic bunch <laughs> to send a grant application to. So, you know, get out there. Um, 
we have to, because of the way our accounting works, we need to disperse the funds by June 17th. That means if you have a conference, say, in August, you still have to get the money from us by the middle of June. Uh, we need your projects complete by September 30th. But as Pat was saying, if your uh, project didn't quite hit those dates, talk to us. We can maybe work it out. The simulation conference was in the beginning of October. So yes, it was. Things were you know, <laughs> so, and then final reports. Yes, we do have to have a final report those auditors, you know, what can we say? Um, and we're interested in what you did, honestly. We're interested in how well this process worked for you. We're interested in what you learned, what your experience was like. And yes, we do actually, this is part of your agreement when you get one of these grants, is that you're going to share. And so Sheila and Pat came to share with us today. We've had other people uh, do this earlier this year. We did it for when uh, people went to with PLA. PLA. Yep. And, the same um, thing, they got the grant yeah. and this was not a terrible experience. Was it? <laughs> no, 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 no. This was fun. Okay. <laughs> well, they had to say that. <laughs> but Money has not exchanged hands. No. <laughs> well, it did, but well, early. No, yeah. early. <laughs> um, but <coughs> sharing is not a bad thing because it is helping a lot of other people, too. So we really hope we're going to hear from you. We really hope we're going to get a CE application. And if you're not ready to do it this year, then put this on your calendar. Uh, start thinking about this next summer. As soon as you get done with summer reading, start thinking about this. Because this is a great opportunity and one we'd really love to see you take advantage of. In fact, we do give preference to people, to libraries, who have not received a CE grant before or have not received one for some time. So get out there, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Um, I think this is a great session. Um, I'm just going to go to... Um, thank you, Pat, Sheila, and Laura for sharing with us today. Um, I think it was very useful and very interesting um, for everyone. Um, Laura Stanton says thanks to everyone, too. Well, She's Chad. Yeah. In there. Um, and I hope you will join us next week when our topic and comes to be a, well, the title of this session is A Clever Title with a Pun Involving the Word gra Graphic. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. graphic novels and manga. A um, couple of young adult and uh, teen librarians um, from Bellevue and La Vista are going to um, share information about using those in your library with your um, teens. So hope you'll join us next time. And thank you very much for attending this week. That will wrap it up. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.